everyone, I'm BB. Today I'm going to be talking about Heartstopper and how it's probably got the best representation out of any show or movie I've ever seen. I, I wish I uploaded this when I originally planned uh, two weeks ago, but you know what? I was sick and it's better than ever. Okay, maybe some of you won't agree with this, but I actually do think Heartstopper has some of the best representation I've ever seen in any show. Because, like, there's a lot of nice representation, like subtle representation in other shows, and that's good too, but they never, they're never really allowed to dive into it because of, you know, certain companies that they're, you know, what's the word, attached to. I'm mostly talking about Disney, but, you know, it's fine. As much as I hate Disney, though, they did make the Pine Stitch, so <laughs> I can't complain. But, anyway, let's get into the video. Okay, first off, well, a lot, few other, like, forms of media have done this. I, I haven't really seen it in a lot of them, but I, I don't really want to talk about it, but I kind of have to. The negative sides of being, like, LGBT. Because, you know, there's a lot of negative sides that come with it, but... A lot of shows that have LGBT characters don't really talk about that. Like, she for example, there's so many LGBT characters in that, but did they ever once talk about the negative side of it? I don't think so. Or even in the Owl House or Steven Universe. Like, sure, they were affected by the negative sides in real life, but they never get to mention it in the show. But, Hardstopper mentions it quite a lot. <clears throat> they talk about how Char Charlie gets bullied for being gay. They talk about how Elle gets bullied for being trans. Which, you know, not a lot of shows do that. And they also, um, with Nick, you know, being bisexual, everyone always says, like, you can only, you're only, you're gay, Nick. You can only be gay or straight. There's no other sexualities. Like, <clears throat> no. No, there isn't. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is still kind of sore. But I wanted to make this video. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Nick, Nick's bisexuality is always questioned. Even in real life, Kit Connors is questioned. But we're not going to get into that here. And it's, it's quite unpleasant to watch, but I'm glad that they showed it. I really am. It's important to show that people who are bisexual are constantly being second-guessed, saying that they're not real. They are real, but sure. And it's kind of horrible. And, and obviously I've talked about the other negative sides as well, but I think that's kind of all I have to say. <clears throat> and like I said in the previous segment, assuming people's sexualities, like, Nick's dad is a good example of that. He just assumes that Nick and Charlie are straight and that they're best friends, and he's like, I, I can't really do a French accent, but he's like, you'll, you'll both get girlfriends if you keep playing rugby. G girls love rugby lads. Like, ew, just all I have to say about that. Well, but it's kind of true, because Imogen did have a crush on Nick as well. <laughs> but, yeah, and people always assume that Nick's straight, that's like the whole point of season one, and season two as well. Everyone just assumes Nick is straight, and you can't just assume someone's sexuality by how they look, or even how they act. I used to do it, but Heartstopper actually taught me it was wrong to do that, so, cool. I used to assume a lot of people's sexuality is just because of how they looked and act, but you can't, because that has nothing to do with who, your sexuality. Like, there's probably someone out there who's, like, the most, like, sportiest lad in the world, but they have a boyfriend. <laughs> like, I don't just mean Nick, I mean, like, in real life, there's probably someone like that. So, yeah, I, I don't think you can just assume someone's sexuality by the way they look, and I think it's wrong to do that. You can get vibes from people, like, you can't change a vibe you get from someone. But, if you, get, if you get, like, a gay vibe from someone, just for example, and it turns out they have a girlfriend, like, just keep it to yourself, you know? Like, don't try and assume their sexuality. And the biphobia as well, like, like I said, there was so much biphobia. Kit Connor gets a lot of biphobia, and it's, it's not good. It's not good. Because, like, I, 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 no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> um... A lot of people, like, again in the show, always say that but bisexuality isn't real. Even Nick's brother, David. Ugh, I hate David. Not as bad as Ben, though. Not as bad as Ben, but I still, I hate David. Like, I don't like him. Because, <laughs> like, it, 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 like, he's, like, obviously, he's the first thing he assumes is, my little brother's gay, oh my god. Which, okay, that's a fair thing to think at first. I don't mind if it's, like, at first you think that, but... When Nick literally tells him that he's bisexual <clears throat> multiple times, he's still like, <clears throat> you can, you're not bisexual, you can only be gay, it's absolute bullshit. And it's like, shut up, David. And, and I kind of feel like I talked about this as well, but like constantly mentioning people's sexuality, like Harry does that to, to Charlie all the time, always t talking about the fact that he's gay. I, I, you know what, I've, I've, over the years I really hate that word now. I don't, I don't label myself with that word anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't get into that here. Um, yeah, that. So he's always calling Charlie gay. He's and he's like, obviously everyone's always calling Nick, Nick gay, even though he's bi. I've said this throughout the video, but I'm not gonna stop saying it. 
And, yeah, no one, like, keeps talking about Elle being trans, though, which is good. I'm glad that they didn't do that. But, you know, it's not good. I don't like it. And even with James as well, everyone's like, he's the only other gay kid here, so he must have given Charlie that love bite. Um, for you Americans, a love bite is a hickey. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, again, they always mention it, and I don't like it, you know? Like, it's good to mention it sometimes, because, like, with Darcy, Darcy obviously is a lesbian, and she has, like, good intentions when she mentions sexuality 24-7, but even then, I kind of just get annoyed when people just mention it all the time. And, you know, obviously I've dealt with that too, and I blocked people for it, so, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't tolerate that, just so you know. Although, what's really good about Heartstopper is that it shows healthy LGBT relationships, because most other shows, although they do have healthy LGBT relationships, they also have really bad ones, like, they're trying to make out that they're awful and you shouldn't be in one. Like, I've seen a lot of couples, like, LGBT couples in media like that, and it's not good. You know, there's the cheating bisexual partner, and then the, the toxic two men dating, and it's like, come on, what are you doing? But Heartstopper's not like that. They actually make a point of that, actually, because I'm saying actually a lot, like Nick. <laughs> Nick, Nick. When Nick's trying to come out to his friends, he has, like, a fantasy sequence about, like, them, like, judging him and, like, Ch Charlie be getting mad that he's not coming out. But then, the, the one that really stuck out to me, he, uh, imagines Tori saying to him, you're bisexual, does that mean you're going to cheat on my brother? Which, I've never seen that ever done before in any show. Because, in every other show that has a bisexual character, the bisexual is always a cheater. Like, almost every time they're a cheater, and it's ridiculous. But, like, that's what people see bisexuality as. They don't think it's real, and they think it's an excuse for people to cheat on their partners. Every sexuality cheats. So, no. <laughs> I'm getting heated, I'll calm down. So, but yeah. That, that, that sequence actually, like, I loved it so much because it showed you that Nick's never gonna cheat on Charlie, of course not, but it shows you that, like, that's what pe that's what he's afraid people will think if he tells them, which is a real thing as well. So, Alice, you did an awesome job with that. That was awesome. And obviously, Elle and Tao are a great relationship. Tara and Darcy are a great relationship. And <laughs> Isaac has a nice platonic relationship with James because Isaac is Arrow Ace. But yeah. All like the LGBT relationships in the show are very nice, especially Mr. Farouk and uh, Mr. Ajay, I forgot about them. <laughs> it was nice to have an older representation. Okay, <sighs> this is a segment I was struggling. I don't want to talk about it, but I have to. I've compared Heartstopper to this a lot, and I feel wrong about it, because comparing Heartstopper to this piece of rubbish just feels absolutely wrong to me. And I hope it feels wrong to all of you as well, but I'm going to have to talk about it. Here's what you missed on Glee. Yeah. It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> oh. Okay, if you remember a couple years ago, I had a little kind of obsession with Glee. Uh, it was ridiculous. And I thought it actually had good representation in it. And I, and I actually feel crazy that I ever, ever thought that. <laughs> oh my god. Because, like, the moment I first looked, saw Heartstopper, like, my love for Glee just instantly disappeared because I got to see what real representation looks like. Ugh. Ugh. So, so I'm sorry, I just don't want to talk about Glee on this channel ever again after this. this is, but this is kind of, I'm doing this for clarity for myself because this is kind of like putting Glee behind me finally now, basically. That's what I wanted to do with this segment. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm talking about other shows in general, but I'm specific, I also specifically want to talk about Glee and, and the representation in that, because even though it's not the worst representation in the world, I'll give them that, it's far from even perfect, you know? Well, Heartstopper feels perfect with its representation and characters. Th this show can actually just burn in hell <laughs> where it belongs, especially with how, you, you know, it was made and how they treated their, their staff, but I'm not going to even gonna get into that because it's not, this video is not about that. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, I don't even want to mention them by name, but you know who, exactly who I'm talking about. Their relationship. I actually, before Heart Supper came out, I actually wrote a whole essay about them, and I regret ever writing that. Um, their relationship. Oh, oh God, it's so awful. <laughs> Looking back now, it's so awful. Like, I thought it was good before I saw Nick and Charlie, but now I just, ugh, I cringe at it. Like... They cheated on each other, they they broke up with each other so many times, they were like so toxic to each other. Like, oh my god. Just, oh my god. Ew. 
And don't even get me started on how this show treats bi bisexuality. Like, they just, like, literally say in one episode that bisexuality doesn't exist and it's just an excuse for, for gay men not to come out. What? Like, what are you talking about? And then you would literally have a bisexual character afterwards, Brittany. Like, Brittany and Satana, I still love them and they're good. And, yeah, but even then, like, <clears throat> their representation, well, like, their, their, like, relationship. If this was in Heartstopper, I wouldn't love Heartstopper as much as I do now. Because, like, there's an, there's an episode where Santana breaks up with Brittany because she doesn't want to cheat on her, which actually is the most mature thing you do. You should do. I actually quite like that. But then Brittany immediately moves on with a boy, and it feels like, all right. And I'm not even going to tell you what Santana said about that, because it's awful. <laughs> but yeah, enough of that. That will be the last two. I'll, I'll ever speak of that abomination of a show. <clears throat> anyway, other shows like The Owl House, she Ra, Steven Universe, they have a good representation as well. They have pretty amazing representation. Steven Universe was the first c kids cartoon to have an LGBT wedding in it. But, the problem is that they were held back by their, like, superiors, basically. And they weren't, and they didn't really talk about sexualities. Like, they're there, sure. Like, Adora and Catra did get together in the end. And, like, I, they, I actually don't think they were a toxic relationship. Because even though they went from friends to enemies to lovers, I, I actually think it was all well done. And Catra's character is amazing. Don't even get me started. <laughs> And even, even Avatar, you know, with Korra and Asami, you know, anyone high, holds Korra in high regard as being, like, one of the first LGBT characters in a, in a, a kid's show, but, like, all they did was hold hands at the end. And sure, it's explained more in the comics, which is great, but still, it's not really that great representation. They don't talk about it, and even other shows that are for a more mature audience don't really talk about it that much. Like, even Hell of a Boss, I would say. There is one scene in Hell of a Boss, though, which is really good, and it actually is, like, what I've been talking about. And in the episode when, like, Moxie's dad tricks him into, like, going to his house so Moxie could marry, um, what's his name? Chaz. Ugh, Chaz. Um, there's a scene when, like, Moxie's dad pushes a button and, and a bunch of dildos come out of the walls. That actually happened. I'm not gonna show you, obviously, but that actually happened. And then Moxie says to his dad, what do you think I'm into? And then Moxie's dad's like, this is the shit gays like, isn't it? And then that, that Moxie says, Dad, I'm bisexual. And then he's and then his dad goes, Yeah, gay. And then obviously that seems pretty similar to what I've talked about in this video. And it was a pretty good scene. But that's kinda of the only time they've ever mentioned like anything about sexualities. Like, sure, Blitz and Stolas are in a relationship, but it's never been mentioned that about it, you know. Like no one cares if Stolas is gay or not. They Stella doesn't even care that she that he cheated on her. He only cares that he did it with an imp of all demons. <laughs> and Blitz was pansexual, but again, never been mentioned. So yeah, even in mature shows, it's n not really talked about. So I'm glad Heartstopper exists for that reason. Alright, that video actually took my voice away. <laughs> I actually feel tired after <laughs> speaking so long. It's because I'm not 100% better yet. Like, I feel fine, I just have a bad throat and a bad cough, and you can probably hear that. But that's where I'm going to end that video here. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And, and let me know if you can think of any other show that has better representation than Heartstopper. Or a movie. In fact, another another one I forgot to mention is Nimona. How Nimona's gender fluid and then, obviously, what's his name? The, the, the main knight and he has a boyfriend but never mentioned their sexualities. But, again, the video's got... I don't want the video to be too long so I'm going to end it there. But, again, let me know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!